Praise the Lord. And this is the church. You most welcome in Jesus' mighty name. Sweet Heavenly Father, we bless and adore you in the name of Jesus. We give you praise. Thank you for making this day possible. We receive your word with thanksgiving in the name of Jesus. Again, welcome to the church. We're still examining what the promises of God are and how we should responsibly handle them. If you see Matthew chapter 5, Matthew 5, uh, and before then, let's read Mark 10, Mark 10, verse 29, glory to God. I read Mark 10, 29. The Lord Jesus faced a challenge here from his disciples, and that was a big one. I read Mark 10, take from verse 28. <clears throat> then Peter began to say to him, to Jesus, See, we have left all and followed you. We've left all and followed you. What was he insinuating? What have we to show for it? What can we say we have gained for just living on and following you? We left everything. Here is response. Verse 29. So Jesus answered and said, Assuredly, I say to you, there is no one who has left house, or brothers, or sisters, or father, or mother, or wife, or children, or lands, for my sake and the Gospels, who shall not receive a hundredfold now in this time, houses and brothers and sisters and mothers and children and lands with persecutions, with persecutions, and in the age to come, eternal life. We have this golden promise here that whatever we have left, or, as some would say, invested in the kingdom. It says, right here, right, right here, we will receive a hundredfold. Hallelujah. There's no one that has left anything, or lost anything, or invested anything because of the kingdom that would not receive a hundredfold. Now, in this time, it says, there's not one person who has made any investment, any commitment, who is involved in any way, who has lost anything or left anything just because of the kingdom, because of the call of God. Hallelujah. It says, for my sake and the gospels. Wow. I left my PhD because of Jesus and because of his gospel. It's not bragging, please. We have to face it. There's something to live. There's something somebody has to live if the person must really walk with the Lord. It says for his sake and for his gospels. So it's not for the sake of what friend said. It's not for the sake of anything. That's to be for the sake of Jesus and for the sake of the gospel of Jesus, not for any other person's sake. If somebody uh, was moved into Answering the call when God has not called a person, person will blame himself or herself. If it's because of Jesus and because of the word of God, the gospel of our Lord Jesus says, No one who has left father or mother, it tells you that we, if we must really, really claim to have left anything, it has to be evident. It should be evident in the things we have left, in relationships relationships not to forsake your wife or divorce your wife or husband no but to ensure that none of these persons or all relationships or things is allowed or permitted to determine our response to the promptings of the holy spirit that's what he's saying that none of these things should be strong enough to slow us down or make us opt out or make us not commit our whole being into the gospel None of the relationships. Says, look at. 
No, there is no one who has left house, or brothers, or sisters, or father, or mother, or wife, or children, or lands. You can feel the gap. Or husband, possessions. Nothing should be the reason we cannot go all the way with Jesus. In our sense, there's a promise. Whoever has left anything, if they have really left, <laughs> some of us have not left anything, we, we have some tentacles spread here and there. So that in case there's some something that is not you know expected mm. there's something to revert to <laughs> those people are playing that game the smart game the sharp game it doesn't work if it's on record before the law that we have actually left all whatever we have left it says not one person that would not receive a hundredfold now now it's an adverb of place or rather adverb of time sorry now means now adverb of time now in this time look at the combination the time to receive a hundredfold return is now and in this time people wonder if i if after all i've done what am i getting it's not by now stealing church money no that's not to get the hundredfold return the return comes from the lord in his own supernatural manner not by ambushing the offerings by ambushing everything that is supposed to go to the church, we're ambushing, we're just, just, just collecting and taking by force. You see, our influence or position, that's not what we're saying. It says, now and in this time, we shall receive a hundredfold. But you look at it, it says, with persecutions. That's what we don't, we don't want to hear. With persecutions, these are the promises of God. That we will receive a hundredfold return, now in this time. Wait, it says, with persecutions. Why would that come in? Matthew 5, verse 10. Hallelujah. Matthew 5, 10. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for this is the kingdom of heaven, for the sake of doing the right thing as authorized by the Master, Jesus. For the sake of righteousness, for the sake of being on the Lord's side, for the sake of sticking out, with whatever God says. No, people, you'll be persecuted for daring to do the will of God. There are those who will tell you, don't ever try to do God's will unless they edit it or command you to do. That is going too far. Such persons qualify to die. Except God keeps, chooses to keep them alive. We are, people are confronting God with impunity. And when they start dying instrumentally, not necessarily physically at once. That could be it, no, an eventual thing. But you see, people start dying by installments. They start losing their relevance. They start losing their worth. They start dropping in their rating. If you go to the US, you see how there's the presidential rating. Whether it goes up or comes down. In advanced nations, they do that opinion poll. Yeah. They rate their presidents. If you go to the UK, they rate their prime minister. The approval rating drops or rises. So, and it's important to them there. In this climate, in Africa, it doesn't happen. <laughs> you see, so because of doing what is right, what the law commands, and you do that as swiftly, as quickly as possible, somebody will hate you for that. Some confront you, downgrade you, call you names, and that's fine. It says you must be ready. It's a promise. You will be persecuted because you've chosen to be on the Lord's side. That should be expected. <laughs> that should be expected. They will be called names. There will be name called. There will be more slinging. That should be expected. It's a promise. Don't forget. So when you are now being so persecuted, why do you grab a one and complain? Why do you drop the ball? It should be expected. You should have known that there's no doing right before the Lord that would not be persecuted. There's no moment you do. The Bible says if you are going to go through problems, let's not because you committed a crime. In First Peter, we are told that. It says if you must go through pains, sorrows, and persecutions, let it be because of the word of God, because you've done the right thing. They found an occasion with Daniel. They couldn't find any. It had to be through his commitment to the Lord. He said it is through his prayer life we get him. And they got him. That was persecution. 
they really got him. They knew if it was to get him to commit sin, they would never succeed. They had to get him through his righteousness, period. And that is supposed to be a given. So when we go through persecution, it shouldn't be special. It's not breaking news. It's part of the package, part of the promise God made us. And because the promise, it has to be fulfilled. Are you going through some persecution? Make sure it's not because of what you did wrong. If you did something right and you're so sure it's the word of God you've done, and at the time you were asked to do it, then rejoice. It says, rejoice. It says you are blessed. That should be sufficient. We are blessed. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness. Look at the promise. This is the kingdom of heaven. Please take it for granted that yours, mine, is the kingdom of heaven. Be encouraged. Don't cry. Don't cry anymore. Don't drop the ball. Don't go under because of persecution. If they will say you want to be pastor's wife or second wife, or you want to be this, you want to become that, you want to position. That's not they will say you stole money. They will go all the way to pull you and roll you down. God says he will uphold you with his right of righteousness. And that's today's judge. I'll see you tomorrow. Blessings. Tape holds today by 12 noon. I'll see you. Thank you. Bye for now. Blessings.